Okay, everybody. Let me know if you guys can uh, hear me. You guys get to see my cool new hat. I'm not going to wear this hat the whole time. I just want to show off my cool new hat. Because, uh, yeah, as someone said, Roy says it's heating up in Arizona. Well, so it is right now in uh, California. And uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of work outside this summer. So I, I needed a new hat to uh, not sunburn myself. Sweet. Okay. Uh, well, let me get rid of this hat. Put on my other hat. Sweet. Um, okay. Uh, cool. Thumbs up on the audio and the visuals. Cool. Um, so uh, one thing I, sh I, I do want to say is that I, uh, I spent a bit of time and I worked on, um, fine tuning my live stream setup a little bit. I actually trashed, like I, I, I use this app called Wirecast. I, I showed that P4 in a, in a live stream and, uh, I trashed my whole file and then rebuilt it from scratch. And, uh, it seems to be humming coming really well it's purring like a kitten so um hopefully we'll be good today i actually um did some little tweaks you'll see uh you'll see i got like a little nice title bar down there so a couple things i've been wanting to do i thought it'd be fun to spice things up a little bit change things up a little bit um and uh, yeah just streamlined the interface learned a little cool little tricks um that uh i've been wanting to learn how to do in wirecast so yeah hopefully that'll make uh everything a lot better so sweet um yeah, that hat. Yeah, that, that. I mean, blocks the beautiful rays from my lights, so you guys can't. Uh, you can't see me too well with that hat on. You get. You got to see me because I'm the. I'm the star of the show, right? Okay. Um. So today is all about foundation forms. Exciting. I know everybody is like, Joe, when are you going to do videos on forms? Joe, when are you going to do videos on forms? And um, I have forms is a really big beast in Foundation Six, like. I actually put a lot of work into the forms and um, I have planned, I think I have planned like a dozen videos on the forms alone. There's so much involved in there and there's so many things that you can do. But until I create like those individual small videos, I figured why not just do one, a live stream on the forms so you guys can really get um, your teeth into it and really maybe learn some of the power user stuff. Um, obviously I'm gonna start from the beginning show you how to build a basic form um with email and then uh and then we'll kind of ramp up and go from like zero to 60 really quick I'll show you some really cool power user tips now forms has so much involved in with it that it really is impossible for me to go over everything like it i mean there's so much i could probably talk about three hours for forms and still have stuff we could talk about right so um yeah Thanks for everyone joining today. Sorry, um, I, I didn't say all the hellos to Danny and to Sarah and to Mr. Cole and to Peter. Peter, thanks for coming from Belgium. Steve and Crystal, Mr. Williams, and Mr. Danny Grizzle. Love. And Rion, thank you for coming. Dominic, Mr. Workman's in the house. And Unicorn Girl with the, with the dab emoji. Okay, cool. There we go. Let's get started. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Whoa, wasn't that cool? That was one of the cool little things I did. And look, I'm in a circle. Oh, I'm in a circle. Pretty cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's launch Rapid Weaver. I have a headache today, actually. Man, that's why right. I got another cup of coffee. Maybe that'll help out. Um, you know what? Just so it's not annoying, um, I'm gonna hold on really quick. I'm just gonna install. Um, stacks 4.0 really quick. I have a beta of 4.1 installed and, um, and yeah, I just, it's just going to be better if I just quickly install 4.0 so that uh, you guys don't see anything and confuse any of you guys. So we're going to install stacks 4.0. Hold on one second. It's installing. Oh, unicorn. <laughs> Unicorn girl is my daughter. Unicorn girl is my daughter. So everyone say hello to Jessica. She wanted to attend my live stream today. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, Stacks 4.0 is installed. Let's go ahead and launch Rapid Weaver again. Been waiting on forms from Ottawa. Man. Okay. Let's just open up Sandbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later. Thank you very much. Oh, 
Drum roll. If any, if any of you guys have watched some of my videos, she, Jessica's been the star in some of them. She's been, let's see, she was in the Weaver Space Conference video. Um, Horizon, she had a big part in the Horizon video. Uh, she's been in a few, a few other ones. Obviously, the the oh, the Total CMS blog that that one was pretty epic. All three of my kids were in that blog launch video, and uh, yeah, pretty cool. Okay. Um, oh, one thing, really quick. So this morning, um, Bill Fleming on Weaver Space was talking about where can he add PHP, and uh, I told him, oh, go ahead and just add it into a HTML stack. And then I, I looked in this code section of uh, the Foundation 6 stacks and it was, it was just like, there's something missing. So I added a PHP stack. Um, it just allows you to type in PHP code directly into here without having to do the PHP tags. So it's a minor thing, right? But hey, it's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, um, PHP, uh, PHP stack. That'll come in the next Foundation update. I'll probably ship it this week. Um, it, it's a very minor thing, but, uh, yeah, it's, pre, it's cool. And just drag and drop PHP stack on the page and you can go ahead and add in your PHP. Okay, cool. Um, so, but we are here to talk about forms today and, um, let's just go ahead and add in, uh, where we're going to start is I'm going to start with templates. Um, so if you haven't downloaded the foundation six templates, go ahead and download the template pack. Um, they are free and um, they're on the foundation product page. Go all the way down to the download section. And I think it's just foundation six templates or something like that. Okay. And right now there's 40, I believe there's 46 templates now. Pretty cool. I shipped updates last week to the templates. Um, if you haven't checked for updates, go ahead and do that and get all. Of, I shipped a ton of new templates. I'm not going to go over them today because uh, we have a lot to go over with forms. But we are going to look at forms. So if you look here, there are a bunch of different form um, setups. Right? The most simple one, okay, is the contact form, right? And that is a great place to start. And that's where we are going to start right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add a contact form to my page. And uh, as with normal templates, we're just going to extract this template. And now I have my nice form on the page. Okay. So... Um, I'll go through all the individual um, stacks and maybe some of the settings in a little bit, but right now we're, we're just going to get a simple contact form created. Okay. And um, may, maybe we'll add um, someone actually this week wanted to add a checkbox to the simple contact form and maybe we'll do that too. Okay. Um, so now we have a form. So inside of the form, essentially uh, you have to add all of your form fields inside this form stack. Okay, you see that there's a form stack and there's all kinds of stuff in here. Now, now when we preview this page, we're only gonna see a few things. We're, we're gonna see all these fields and the submit button. We're not gonna see any of this other gibberish, okay? Um, but we'll explain what that stuff is. So let's, let's review what this template has. We have um, the basic, you know, fields that we would need for a form, right? So we have, this first one is obviously the name. So if we look at the settings for this, right? We'll see that we have the field name is name, okay? Um, our placeholder text is your name, right? And that placeholder text is what's added into the uh, the background of the field, right? Uh, you can you can supply a default value. I don't think that makes sense for a contact form, but um, if you wanted to supply a default value, you can do that as well, okay? Um, we're not gonna we're not gonna actually we'll look at a few other things, okay? So interface. Um, or let's see, we're going to skip over assistive attributes for right now. Okay. Well, I guess we'll go over them. Okay. Oops. Hold on. Someone is trying to call me. Okay. Um, so assistive attributes, what that is, is that's for accessibility and things of that nature. Right. And there's a lot of possibilities here. Okay. First off is the label. Okay. And that's what shows at the very top. Okay. And that tells, um, that's really important for accessibility. Okay. Now I have to say that forms are are really, really, really important to have. There's a lot of accessibility features built into forms, like a lot. And um, I'm sorry about that, but I wanted to give you guys all the control that you really need, especially with nowadays where um, you know forms and everything are 
um, you know, you know, big people are getting sued because their websites, and a lot of that has to do with forms, where people that are using assistive uh, devices can't fill out forms or don't know how to submit information, right? So, and in forms, there's so much um, accessible, uh, accessible features that I wanted to do, enable all of that for you so you guys have all of that, okay? But the default features are pretty simple, right? We have a label, okay? Um, now, if you didn't want the label up at top, actually, you know what? I'm going to skip over that. Um, I'm not going to deep dive into all these features yet. First, we have a label, and that's the name, okay? That tells the accessible, you know, uh, accessibility that this is your name, okay? Then we have help text, and this is a little help text that shows below, okay, the field. Um, you can hide those, so if you, uh, you know, if you only wanted to, you know, not display the label or the help text, okay, you can hide it from the normal view. But what is great is it'll still be there for accessible devices, right? So it is, it is definitely recommended that you fill these fields out because, um, well, they're kind of needed for accessibility. Okay, next up, interface. So you know when you are on your, oh, I don't have my iPhone here. When you're on your iPhone device or your tablet and you get that customized keyboard, right? Um, you know, for email or, you know, very there are different types of keyboards. Well, that's exactly where a lot of this comes in. First off, the auto suggest. And this is for auto, browser autofill. So you can suggest that the browser autofill the full name in this, or you can choose first name or middle name or last name, right? So obviously here, I just have one name field, so I want their full name, okay? And then keyboard type, here you can choose what type of keyboard will be displayed when this field is selected on a mobile device, right? So obviously for a name, we want text. And then we can auto caps things, right? So we can just say, um, you know, I hate sometimes like when I'm going ahead and type my email um, and the first letter is capitalized, drives me bonkers, right? Well. Um, I made sure that we added the ability for you to customize that. So for a name, we want the first letter of every word to be capitalized, okay? Um, but then if we look at the email field, it's not, right? Um, and then um, we'll skip down to uh, validation. And down here, we set, uh, set it to be required and not empty, okay? So there we go. Next up is uh, email. So the next field is email. We're gonna breeze through this one a little bit since I explained a lot of these, right? Obviously, the field name is email, okay? Um, field names, I, I should note, cannot have spaces, okay? Um, I recommend them just be a word, okay? Uh, keep them simple and just use a word. Don't try to use dashes or underscores. Underscores might be okay, but I would recommend just a single word, okay? Uh, that would be much better. So here we set the field name to be email. Uh, here's our placeholder. is just a, like a dummy email address so that people know you know, what you're looking for. Um, then we have a label, uh, which is email. We have our help text, uh, just as we saw before. And if we look at the interface, we'll see that the interface, my autofill suggestion is set to email because I want autofill to suggest that the email is populated in this field. Uh, the keyboard type, there is an email keyboard type. And uh, what that does is that adds a little at symbol next to the space bar, right? So little things like this make your form a lot more usable to people, okay? Um, an auto caps is none. I don't want to auto cap anything, right? Because in email, we just want it all lowercase. So there's that. Um, and then down in required, uh, in validation, we have it required. Verify the content is an email address, okay? And next up is our comments area. Um, this has a field name of comments. Um, here you can set the, like the height of the, uh, comments field. Um, you know, so there's very other settings, various settings for that. We have our label and our help text. Um, for this, in this example here, I didn't want to display the help text, um, under the field. So I hid that for, and it's only displayed for accessibility reasons. Um, auto suggest is off because I don't want to, the auto fill to auto, you know, auto fill data into the comments. Cause that isn't anything right. And auto caps is just inherent. It's just the default, right? So basically, um, that means I think it's the first letter of a sentence will be auto capitalized. Okay. Um, and then down here, I, I want the comment to be required and the verify the content is not empty. Okay. So it has some data. Okay, cool. Um, and then obviously I have a submit button. Now, um, I know there, there are some confusion with, uh, buttons in foundation six, so just really, really quick. 
Um, if we go to our Foundation 6 stacks, there is, uh, there's a whole group of buttons now, and this is the Submit button, okay? If we wanted a Reset button, you can add that into a form as well, and that will reset the form, right? So that clears all the form fields. Um, so there are two buttons that can be used inside of a form, Submit and Reset, okay? Cool. Um, and there really isn't much to the Submit button. You just put in a label, and then you can style it as you can style every other button, okay? Um, next up, um, there is a processing stack. Um, and I, I should add the, uh, let me just note really quick down at the very bottom, you're probably aware of this, but um, actually no, um, you can add all of these fields. There are tons of different form fields and we'll dive into some of these um, over time, okay, today. But uh, yeah, you can just drag and drop fields um, and you can also use any other layout stack that you want. Okay, but we'll go into that as well. Uh, processing. So processing, what this does is once a form is submitted, um, it uh, it basically like shows the processing indicator. So by default, I think it does cover form where it puts like a little overlay on the form and then the, uh, you have the circle uh, that kind of turns and animates. You can also have it cover the entire browser or you can have it just kind of like static in place, right? So like maybe if you had it, you know, right above the field and you set the position to be static, it would just, it would display and then kind of spin right there, okay? Um, I, I do like the cover form. I think that's a really cool and clever um, implementation. And there's a few style options for that and some animation options as well, okay? Um, next up, you'll notice that there is a success message and an error message, okay? Success obviously means um, when the form actions are successful, Okay, so in this, uh, we're gonna go over form actions in a little bit, but when the form action returns back a success, this will be displayed. And then um, this particular error says, um, if the form action displays an error on when we submit the form, then this error will be displayed, okay? All right, cool. That kind of goes over all of the various stacks in this template, okay? Um, next up is gonna be our actions. So forms support multiple actions. And by default, in this template, we're going to use an email action. I think that's probably what most of you are going to want to use is an email action, okay? There are other actions, and we're going to be going over those today, okay? And uh, one important thing is you can add as many actions as you want. So if you want an, an e a form to submit two emails, well, guess what? You just add two different email actions, okay? Or you can do, you know, a get URL action and two email actions. There's you know, all kinds of different combinations, uh, it's, it's mu as much as you want, okay? Um, chances are you're probably just gonna do a single action, um, but right now we're gonna dive into email actions. So what is that? Okay, um, so let's look at the email action settings. Now, if you look here, I have um, the, the top here is our message, is our subject. So this is gonna be the subject of our email, okay? And if you notice, there's a, a little syntax here, right? And we have curly brace, curly brace. Now let me zoom in here. We have curly brace, curly brace, name, curly brace, curly brace. And this is, I use this syntax in a few other stacks as well as in the foundation one forms. And what this does is it will insert the form field, the con, the actual data from that field there, right? So um, if I'm a user and I fill out my name, Joe Workman, when the email is sent, it's going to take that value from that field, my name, Joe Workman, and insert it into the subject. Okay. Um, next up is our email template. Now, by default, if you just turn this off, um, if you don't supply a custom email template, essentially what you can do um, or what it does is it just basically, it does a pre-formatted email with all the values from the form and um, yeah, start off with that. Maybe that will work great for you, okay? But you can also um, do a custom email template. And in this example here, I'm actually putting in Markdown, okay? So if you, if you are familiar with Markdown, if you notice here, I have, I'm putting an H3 tag, and then I'm just doing a name colon, and then I'm inserting the name field. And I'm doing email colon and inserting the email field. And then below those, I'm putting in the comments field, okay? Really cool. Now, there's also a custom, um, there's a special uh, macro, okay? Let's say I just wanted um, 
all of the fields. I just wanted to have a header and then I just wanted it to automatically insert all the fields. If you do um, three curly braces and uh, the word fields and then three curly braces, what this will do is it will get all of the fields in the entire form and, and insert them there as like a bulleted list, okay? So uh, so yeah, that, that's just a quick way. You can still do a custom email template, like put in your own text and a header, maybe some other stuff. Um, and then if you just do this uh, three curly braces and the word fields, and if you ever forget that, just look at the tooltip for uh, custom email and it's right there in the tooltip, okay? So um, yeah, so if you look here, no, oops, I can't move my mouse but because um, the tooltip tool will go away. But if you look there, note the following special macro in the template will auto insert all form field data. Okay, and there's the example right there. Okay, so if you ever forget that, just always look at the tooltips. I, I try my best to, to put in decent documentation inside the tooltips so you guys know, get some little tips and tricks and know how to use particular fields. Okay, let me go back to our default though. Um, now, I'm not going to demo this today, but if you wanted, you could actually, if you are, if you use my email stacks, you can actually build out an entire email with my email stacks, use these macros inside of the email to where you want to insert all the fields, paste the entire HTML for that email here in this setting, and it will work. Okay. That's really cool. Power user tip right there. Huge power user tip right there. Again, we're not going to do that today, um, but you can definitely use that. I know this is a tiny field, but you just copy that HTML that's generated by my email stacks, paste it in here, and you're good to go. Like, that's really cool. Very, very, very cool. Okay. Um, so there we go. That has to do, and that, so that has to do with all of the formatting of the email content. Okay. Next up is all that has to do with sending a, the from email address and whatnot. Now, from email address, this one gets a lot of people. Um, and it, this is a very, very, very important setting, okay? Because hosts nowadays require that the from address be the same email domain as the domain your the website is on, right? So um, if I had this form on joeworkman.net, this from address has to be a joeworkman.net email. It cannot be your Gmail address or Yahoo address or whatever, right? It has to be the domain that the form is sending the email from. If if you don't do this, your, your server, your host will not send the email, okay? Unless they're a really shady host, <laughs> okay? Um, so yeah, that is a very important one. The from address must be um, now the name, you can set the name to be whatever you want. Now the to email, um, this is where you want to send the email to. So a lot of times this could be your email address, or, um, if you want to actually send an email to the person that put their email in the form, what you can do is you could just do, um, um, <clears throat> you can do uh, parenthesis print or curly brace, curly brace, email, curly brace, curly brace. Okay. So there we go. So you could do that. Now, let's say you wanted to send an email to you and to this person. Well, guess what? You could just do a comma and then you can put in um, support at weavers.space, right? And then here in the two, um, I want, because this, I want to match the comma list here. So we're going to do um, name and then we're going to do weavers space support. Right. So there we go. Right. So now you can add multiple email addresses. It's just a comma delimited list. Okay. Of emails. And then you can, if you wanted to have corresponding names to those, it would just be a comma delimited list in the same order um, for the two names. So that's another little power user tip there. Okay. Um, and I think I, I document that here. Do I? Yep. There we go. A comma delimited list of emails that you want the email to be sent to. And look at the two name. I think you can also do a comma delimited list of names for the emails. Okay. So again, tool tips are a great thing. Um, this particular one, uh, these next settings are email on failure. Okay. 
And um, this these definitely want your email address in here um, because if there's any sort of failures or something goes wrong, um, it will email you, okay, so that you know. Sometimes, obviously, there's certain errors that it won't email you on if, like, it crashes or something like that. But, um, yeah, you should definitely put in your um, your admin uh, email address in here, okay? Uh, and the from, you're probably going to want to put the same from address that you would put uh, up here, okay? Um, and then optional fields, you can do um, you can do reply addresses. So if you want to reply to, so this is um, if you wanted the email um, to when someone hit reply it, to go to your Gmail address instead of the from address, this is where you would put your Gmail address, okay? Or whatever email you want. This is the email that will be replied to. If you don't define a reply address, then the from address will be used as the reply address, okay? Um, and then we have CCC fields and BCC fields. Um, and then lastly, um, you can use an SMTP server, right? So, um, you know, you can use your, your host's SMTP server. Um, really, if you want very reliable email sent from a form, you probably want to enable SMTP, okay? Um, yeah, uh, you, you'll, you'll get much better return rates and, and send rates um, if you used an SMTP server. Okay, so I do encourage that, but it's not required. And um, then at the very bottom, if you look at this, I have some tips, and this is just to remind you on how you can use those fields, right? So you can use curly brace, curly brace, field name, curly brace, curly brace. Okay, and then I, here's another tip I, I put in that macro, the special macro, to put all the fields in your email. Okay, and those macros will work every in any of these fields. Okay. So they'll work in all of these fields. You can put them in the CC field, in the BCC field, the reply address field. It, it, they won't work in the SMTP settings. That's That would be bad, um, <laughs> right? But they'll work in all of these settings, okay? Uh, and I, th I they probably don't work in the from address field, probably. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head, but I would say they probably don't. Okay, so let's get this published. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, let's just do like... Um, what I can do is I'm gonna do um, no, I'm gonna do like no dash reply at joeworkman.net, right? Uh, in there, and uh, we'll just put from Joe, and then if we go down to reply address, let's uh, do the reply address to uh, support at weavers.space okay so there is i'm going to publish this right now uh so i'm going to publish this to my test server and we can see this this uh form working let me look at the chat sorry i've been ignoring the chat see if there's any questions love the use of html oh roy's roy must be using the html in the email sweet Oh, Davide had a, uh, a or I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that, Davide. Uh, good, good point there. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the website. Okay. All right, so here is our form. Okay, and um, if you notice, I can autofill my details, right? Because I, I can use the browser autofill. Um, and uh, we're going to submit that. If you notice, we get the little processing and we get the thank you message. Thank you. Okay, let's um, let's look at the email that got generated. One second, why airmail airmail is launching here. So here is the um, here's the email that got generated. 
we see message from Joe Workman. Okay, because that was the name that I put in the name field. Um, the e and then we have the um, we have my header, the H3, because that's what I set inside the custom email template. And then we have name colon, the name field, email colon, the email field, and hello there, right? And if we look at, uh, do, 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 how can I look at like all the metadata for this? There it goes. So here we see the from is no reply at joeworkman.net. Okay. Um, the email was sent to um, Joe Workman, the email that was put inside of the email field, as well as su my support email address. And then if I reply to this email, okay, you'll notice that it does reply to, um, oh, I have, I have it's set to reply all by default, um, but it, it replies to, oops, it replies to support at weavers.space. So yeah, pretty cool stuff, right? Um, really simple. Um, yeah, hopefully that, that irons out a, a couple kinks for you guys um, in terms of, you know, I really didn't do much. I, I did, you know, I spent the last half hour explaining this form and all of the fields, but I didn't, all I did is configure the email action to have my email address and we were good to go, right? So definitely start off with this form contact um, field. Now, Davide um, put in the chat that um, there is a lot of times what you want to do is for your customers, you want to be able to configure like, um, this from address or the to address maybe um, with total CMS. Okay. Um, so this is power user tip number one or, or probably number three. I think I did a couple others. Okay. Um, so you can, a lot of times what you might think you might want to do is you would just put a, a macro in here, right? So you would put in here, let me zoom in so you can see. You might want to do like CMS data um, email. You might think that that would work right? You might think that this would take, oops, you might think that this macro would take the email CMS ID and put it in there, okay? That does not work. Um, and the reason is um, the data that's in here, that's in all these settings, isn't inside the HTML of the page, okay? It's on in a PHP file on a server so that it's, you know, it's kind of locked away up there. Um, but there's another way that we can do this. Um, so, um, what you can do is uh, let's look at a hidden field. So inside forms, you can actually have hidden data in your field. Okay, it's kind of like hidden data. So if we do this, um, let's do uh, the field name. Okay, let's set the field name to be um, from. Okay. And the value is, did I, I didn't paste that. Okay, we're just going to do CMS data um, from. All right. Uh, from email. Okay. So let's say that's our, that's our, our CMS ID is from email. So there we go. Um, I now have a hidden, I now have hidden data in my, in my field. Okay. Uh, a lot of times what you want to do is maybe you just do like that. All right. So you know what the hidden data is. You can uh, apply it to the title. Okay. Um, now this data is not um, actually visible in the form at all. Okay. But now that we we're storing the CMS value in our form, what we can do is we can use the, uh, little form macros. I think the field name was, fr Oh, it was just from, right? There we go. So now in my from address field, I can do the from because that is the field name of the hidden data. Right, so here I set the field name to be from. I'm injecting data from total CMS into this field, into this hidden field. Then I can pass that along and use that inside of my form actions. Hopefully that makes sense. And this is a really powerful tool because then it allows you to really um, allow your customers to control your forms and um, you know things like you know what emails it's going to be from, who's the email going to be to all kinds of stuff like that. Okay. Um, so next up is, um, actually, it was actually Fernando who's here today, um, wanted to be able to add um, a checkbox, okay, um, in here. So we're going to do this. We're going to add in a checkbox into my form. 
and um you know maybe uh we'll just do um we'll do the field name as i don't know gdpr okay um and then what you want to do in the label you could be like um agree to our um and then maybe privacy policy or something like that right and probably what you'd want to do is maybe you'd you'd um you'd actually add a little bit of html in this link if you wanted this privacy policy to be a link to something i've seen a couple of people do that and i thought that was pretty clever um i'm not gonna i'm just gonna put in uh, some basic html in here okay and then uh the value is just uh you can put true right whatever value doesn't really matter okay and i, I don't want an off value okay so here i have a field name called gdpr uh, oh, we also want to make sure it's required, okay? And the minimum number of checked is one, okay? Um, and we want it, definitely want a question mark. Okay, so the reason we have min checked here is because you, with checkboxes, you can actually have multiple checkboxes with the same field name, okay? Um, in this instance, we only wanted one. We only want one checkbox, but um, you can have multiple checkboxes for a field name because let's say, you know, you have a bunch of options um, and you want a user to be able to select as many of those options as you want, okay? And then you can pass that data along to the to the email or the form or whatever, okay? Um, and then only the values that are checked will be displayed. So like, let's say, um, you know, you had a field where you had checkboxes and you're like, uh, you know, I need you, you're required to select at least two, right, um, of these checkboxes. Then you can say minimum required two. Um, in this instance, I only want one checked, um, and uh, this should work. Okay, so we have required checkbox, um, and um, I'm just going to preview this locally. I'm not going to publish this. Um, oh, here's an interesting thing. I remember last week in the live stream, I actually, we talked about um, inline data, right? Checkboxes are an inline field, okay? Um, so what we want to do is, um, if we want, obviously we want this on a new line, um, what we could do is I uh, just slap it in a container or slap the button in the container, either or. Either or should work. I mean, we'll just, uh, we'll be... So there's no gutters and whatnot. There we go, right? So... Um, now, if, if I try to submit this, well, A, you're, you're going to see I have all kinds of errors, okay? Um, and that's because uh, if you look here um, for each field, um, one thing I did skip is there's an error field on every single field, right? And then you can display that error message, okay? This field is required, okay? Um, so uh, there we go. We, we got a custom error message for each field. I don't have them for checkboxes yet, the custom error field. Um, but if you notice, that if I fill, let's go ahead and just fill out everything else. Um, boop, and some data here, click submit. You'll see that this does still say, um, hey, you can't do that, right? Um, so because a the, the if you notice, the, the text is still red. It's pretty apparent. Um, it doesn't have a custom field, but there we go. Uh, and then if I click, if I check that and hit submit, it, it will work if it were published. Oh, there we go. Oh, there was a problem submitting the form because you can't submit forms locally. Okay. So that's how you can add a uh, custom checkbox. Um, someone on Weaver Space, I think it was Sarah O'Neill, um, did figure out how to, um, in this one situation, uh, when you only have one checkbox to have a custom error field, um, I added it to my notes to look into that. Um, it gets a lot much trickier when you have multiple checkboxes. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll think about how to do that, add a custom error message to a checkbox. But right now, at least the, the error, the text turns red so that it's definitely apparent that the uh, there's an error with that field, okay? Um, and that's pretty common. I think people see checkboxes and if it turns red, it's pretty apparent that that checkbox needs to be clicked. <clears throat> okay. Um, one thing I should note is um, formatting of like columns and whatnot, okay? You can definitely use whatever stacks you want inside of a form, 
right? So if you wanted to lay out your, um, you know, if you wanted to have a two column inside your form, go ahead and do that. Just add a two column stack. Um, you know, you can put it, maybe we'll put the, the text and the email in one column. Um, and then we'll have the, the comments in the second column, something like that, right? We'll add a little bit of padding and margin. Preview that, right? You'll see there, oh, maybe we'd want to add the check boxes so that they all line up nicely with these. But you see there, you're not limited uh, with the layouts. You can do whatever layouts you want, right? Um, you could even, uh, if you look at, so let's look at some other forms that I have some of the other form templates, just to show you some other layouts uh, that you can do. There is one called a two column form, right? Which is actually pretty interesting because what this does um, is it actually puts labels, okay? This, um, so this adds, you know, a two column where the first column is the labels for the form and by default, the labels are above, right? Um, so this is a, actually a little complex. It's actually a little bit of work to get this done. Um, and the way this is done um, if you notice here, I have two columns for every single one. And then I use a label. And what I do is I turn off the labels in the input. Um, so if you look inside this input stack, you'll see that what I did here is I, inside of assistive attributes, you externally define the attributes. Okay. And what that does is this is basically you're now on your own for adding all of the assistive technology. This basically turns off any of the automatic assistive technology that are built into these stacks, okay? And it means you're on your own, okay? So what, what you do is you can, you can add your own labels via a label stack. It's just a stack inside the forms called the uh, label, I assume. There it is, label, right? Okay, and in the label, you can, add, you can put in uh, your actual label and then you put in, you have to put in the name of the field that this label is associated to. So you're, you're binding this label to a field. That's very important for accessibility. Okay. I do that all automatically. If you do it all within a text, within a, the form field stack, but if you externally define them, you have to, um, you know, associate a label with the text input. The same thing if you wanted help text, right? So then if I wanted to add my own help text in here. I would, I would need to bind the help text and, and tie the field name here um, for this specific help text, text, okay? So again, I allow you to ex define these externally so that you can have a really custom layout, but that does mean it's more work on your part because you have to tie all these things together, okay? And same thing, you'll notice that there's an error field. Um, this is similarly uh, to the error field that's inside this accessibility where you can have a custom error and then you tie that to the actual um, input name. Okay. So again, you need to associate that. So maybe you wanted all the errors to be at the top or something like that, right? I mean, you have a lot of flexibility now since all these are external, they're not tied to the input themselves, but you need to do the work in terms of tying those to a particular field. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, here I, I'm just doing a, a simple two column stack where I have the labels on, in one column and then the fields inside the right column. Okay. So that's the, the two column form template. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Multi-step forms. Um, this is pretty cool. This uses, um, uses tabs actually to create multi-step forms. Right. So here you can do uh, next, you know, fill out your fields, click next. And then when you're done, you click, there is no next button cause there's, it's the submit button. So this is a really clever, um, use of putting tabs inside of a form. So here's a perfect example. I have a form and then inside the form, I have all my tabs and every single tab has different form fields. So I'm just splitting up this form. Um, with tabs, but all of the content is ultimately within the form. If you notice this entire tab container is inside of the form. Okay. So pretty cool there. Um, subscribe form. This one is interesting in that, um, hold on one second. Does it show it does. Okay. So what this form does, if you notice here, it, uh, it's an inline form, right? So it's just a simple one where you, you put in your email address and click submit, right? 
probably nowadays you probably want to put a checkbox in there that says agree blah 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 okay but let's see how to do this so um inside we have a form okay and i have my label i externalized my label so <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is um inside a text field you'll notice that i have a checkbox to supply a data list and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to do color list okay let's preview that and what you'll notice is when i click in there i can type whatever i want okay but it gives me a, an option to pick something from the list and if you notice actually if i if i start typing okay it will filter out so you know if i type re red and green show up because green has re in it right um so it's pretty cool pretty slick Um, just, uh, is everybody hearing me? I got a little warning saying that, uh, uh, maybe I, uh, things weren't working too great. <clears throat> okay. Well, everyone in the chat is, is everything working? Okay. Let me uh, go ahead and check. I'm going to go ahead and visit the live stream really quick. Make sure that uh, we're still working. It, it says we're still streaming, but uh, I got some errors in the chat. Maybe I just need to reload the chat window. Oh, man. There's everybody. I had to reload my uh, my chat window. Okay. Excellent. It looked like maybe YouTube had a little, oh man, look at all these comments I missed. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Uh, look, maybe YouTube had a little glitch because I, uh, the chat room and maybe I looks, maybe, maybe, maybe I froze with you guys. Okay. Um, so hopefully you guys saw the data list. I'm not sure if my live stream, uh, hung or not, but um, this allows you to kind of create a pre-option list for various text inputs. It's very cool. You can use it in a few different fields, actually. Um, it's not just text input. I think number input also has data list. Yes, number input su uh, supports data list. And I think that might be it. I don't think comments do. But text input obviously does. Uh, text area. I don't think text area does. No, it does not. Okay. Um, so yeah, data list is really cool. Um, next up is date. Uh, I could probably talk about the, all the various options inside the date picker for a half hour. I'm not going to go into it, but you have all kinds of control inside the date picker for what is going to be displayed in the view. Like what is the start view? What is the end view? do you want to include weekends and do you want to exclude various holidays there's all kinds of crazy powerful stuff in the date in the date picker okay um again I, i'm not going to dive into that i could probably go on for 30 minutes alone just on this one date picker stack and all the options that you have for setting up the date picker okay um file upload um file upload is just a simple button it allows you to upload um a file do I, oh no, I allow you to upload multiple files um, and you can select whether or not it's images, audio files and stuff like that. So you can kind of limit what files are done, okay? Right now, uploaded files, the only thing that they're, they can do is they upload and then they will um, uh, become email attachments, okay? Um, they don't store anything on the server. Um, they just get attached to the email and deleted. Um, they are deleted for security purposes, um, but yeah, right now they are just attached to an email. The email is then sent and the, the file itself is deleted from the server. Okay. Hidden data. We went over honeypot. I get a lot of questions about Joe. What in the heck is honeypot? So, um, before I do that, let's actually see that there's actually is recapture support. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole recapture setup. You need to go set up a, a API key with Google 
because Google owns reCAPTCHA now. And um, I hate reCAPTCHA, okay? Which is why we now have Honeypot. You all know what reCAPTCHA is, okay? We've all sudden click on the th pictures that have a bus and you click on the five pictures and then it brings up new images and you spend 30 seconds selecting images, right? I, I don't care for reCAPTCHA much anymore. I thought they improved it for a small amount and then they made it bad again. Um, so Honeypot. Honeypot is a way... Um, Yes, Glenn, I, I will show more form actions. I just wanted to go over some, some of the fields right now. I will be going over more form actions. Um, honeypot. Um, honeypot, what that is, is essentially what it does it is it creates a fake field in your form, okay? And you, you actually populate what that fake field is. So you give it a field name, you give it a fake placeholder, you give it a fake ARIA value, and then you, de you define what type of field it should be. Right. So again, this is a fake field. And what happens is um, this field is never displayed to the form at all, but bots will see this field and attempt to fill it out because they want to spam your forms. And what the form stack will do is if anything is filled into those fields, the form will not be submitted. Okay. So that's how Honeypot works. Right creates a, a fake field the form um fee, you know stack knows that this is a fake field so that if any bots insert data into that field the form won't be submitted hopefully that helps honeypot's pretty cool <clears throat> we have multi selects i'm not going to go through all these range slider is actually kind of cool um that looks really nice um there's all kinds of options there um switches select boxes um yeah okay we're gonna we're gonna dive into uh, some form actions because we're running out of time here and I haven't even gotten into that. So what are the other form actions? So we've, we've reviewed email action. That's really cool. Um, let's go over, let's go over get URL action. Okay. What is a get action? So um, there are different types of request types that forms can submit. Um, most forms submit as something called a post form, okay? Um, but you can also do a get action. And what that does is it's the same thing as like typing in a URL in the bar, okay? <clears throat> Actually on, was that during the live stream or was it during the Hangout on Friday? I think it was during the Hangout on Friday. Um, I was helping, I believe it was Sarah O'Neill that's here today or no, maybe it was someone else. I don't remember now. Um, but I helped someone actually do something really cool with total CMS and foundation six forms. And, uh, we use this get URL action. I'm going to show, I'm going to, I'm going to do a really quick example here. Let's just go ahead and I'm going to add a, uh, text input and, um, We're gonna do um, we're gonna do this as Q. Our input name is gonna be Q. Okay, you'll find out why really quick. And our label is gonna be search Google. Default value is nothing. Um, we call this search as our label. Um, type your Google search. Okay. My URL action, okay, is going to be um, HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.com slash. Actually, before I do that really quick, let's just do test. That's not what I wanted. Um, Oh, it doesn't show you, does it? Uh, oh, it's uh, google.com slash search. So I'm going to need slash search. All right, just to make sure. Why does it keep showing that? I want to... Uh, slash search, question mark. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's what we want. Okay, so we're going to do um, URL google.com slash search. And then what this is does, if you noticed, to go to a Google uh, search term, you go to google.com um, 
slash search question mark Q equals and then your search term. This is my search. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, we set up um, our get URL action is going to go to Google. Um, and then uh, we're going to create this text input field and we're going to create the field name as Q. And the reason the field name is Q is because that is the parameter that's passed to the URL. Okay. Um, so actually I'm going to just, I'm going to submit this. Okay. And, uh, let's go here, go to my sandbox site. And we have a, we have a search box. So I'm going to search, I'm going to search rapid weaver. Oops. Enter. And that takes me to Google and searches rapid weaver. Look at that. How cool is that? Right now? How does this help you? Like, like you're probably not going to create Google search forms, um, you know, all the time on your site. Right. Um, but you could do something like this, right? You could do, um, site colon, oh man, is it weavers dot space? Yeah, there we go. So you can do a site specific search, right? Um, and I think if you just did like this, uh, I don't know. Hmm. You'd have to do some, some research on how you can pass this via a parameter or something like that, but then you can create a site specific search field. Kind of, kind of interesting, but, um, what I did, um, I'm not going to do the demo that I did, of uh, that I, we generated for the person. But essentially what we did is um, we, what she wanted to do was, if you're familiar with Total CMS, Total CMS uses uh, URLs, you know, URL queries to parse out a permalink for a blog. Well, what she wanted to do is she wanted all permalinks to be hidden. Um, and then basically if you had to type in the permalink into the search box and we hit enter, it would actually just load that permalink um, into the browser. And that was all done via a get URL action because basically we were, um, passing the form fields into a URL. Hopefully that isn't too confusing, but yeah, that's really cool. It's very powerful. Um, other things that you could do is if you're familiar with my agent stack, my agent stack has, um, agent URL, which can then take those URL, uh, parameters, and then you can display content based on things that you know, data that was passed to it, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, man, that, that's probably a two hour stream alone um, on just that one topic. Okay. But get URL action. So that's get URL action. Oops, I deleted my form. Um, next up is post URL action. And this is if you know you have a URL um, that you need to post data to. Um, basically, it'll take all the form data and it will do a post URL. And it's, it's hard to uh, explain what that means. Essentially, it's similar to a get request, but all of the data is hidden. It's not in the URL, okay? It's all, it's all passed to the server within the request. So that means that um, whatever URL you are posting, you have to have logic that then parses that data, okay? So a lot of this, this is probably more advanced for people that know what this is, this, you're gonna use this, okay? If you have PHP on the, on the page, it's going to parse the post variable. Um, you can definitely use this next is post URL background Ajax. And what this does is instead of now the post URL action will actually kind of, it'll load the URL in the browser. Okay. Um, this particular one, it just does it in the background via an Ajax request. Sorry if that's confusing for newbies, but for those people that are advanced and know what this is, this is very powerful. Basically, you would pass this your own PHP script um, that then parsed the data and did whatever you wanted. Okay, but it all happens in the background. And then if, if that request returns a, a success, the form will display a success, so on and so forth. So this, this, really, this po post URL um, Ajax really means that you're going to create a PHP script or something else, most likely PHP, that um, you know parses your form data and does whatever you want. Maybe it inserts it into 
a custom CRM or a database or something like that. Okay. But right now, um, there is no, uh, oh, next one is redirect on success. So, um, what this does is, um, this is, you use this in conjunction with other actions. So like you would use it in conjunction with email or you would use it in conjunction with post, um, uh, Ajax. Okay. And then, um, once email action and post URL action are successful, um, this can watch when those success e successful events happen and then redirect the user to a URL. Pretty cool. Okay. Um, the last thing that I want to show um, is... Actually, I'm going to go ahead and... and Chuck on that con the default contact form again, really quick. Publish that. Okay. Um, so I wanted to show this is going to be the last thing uh, we're going to show today because we're already gone long. But I want to show you a way. Oh, I thought I... Oh, there we go. Man, Safari loves to cache data. Okay. Um, so let's say you want to pre-fill um, contents of a form. Okay. You can do that by passing URL parameters. Um, so I have this form. Um, and if you remember the form name here, the field name is, um, a name, this one is email and this one is comments. <clears throat> so let's say I wanted to pre-populate the comments field with something else, right? Um, if I just do, uh, let's do a little, uh, zoom tool so you guys can see this, right? Zoom. Okay. So if I do question mark and I do comments equal. I love foundation six. I enter. What you'll notice is I pre-populated the comments field with some data purely by passing the parameter via the URL. Okay. Um, so yeah, pretty cool here, right? Um, you, you can, if you want to pass multiple of them, you can do that as well. So let's, let's say after this, I can do um, and name equals live streamers. There we go. I, I pre-filled two of the fields simply by passing data to the URL with the field names. Right? That That's really powerful. Some use cases for that um, could definitely be... Um, Let's say you wanted a link um, in an email and um, you can a populate in a hitting field with this as well, right? So like maybe you have a referrer um, field, right? And whenever, if you were just to add referrer equals email, right? That hidden field would be populated with where that person came from, okay? Um, you know, you can populate, you know, pre-made, uh, you know, thank you, comments or something. I don't know. Right. But basically what's really cool is you can customize the, the data that's populated in a form, at least the default data, um, with data via a URL or with a link. That's pretty powerful, especially if you, you know, if you want to start doing tricky stuff with hidden data it could be interesting. Right. So, um, think outside the box with that. I know a lot of you, um, you know, um, yeah, I think a lot of you will get a lot of good use out of that. Okay. Let me see if there's any other questions. Um, okay, let's see here. Whoops. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Uh, there are four honeypot types text, email. What is the best practice? It's really up to you, Dan. Um, you know, uh, it, it's again, you're just creating a fake field. Um, there is no best answer here. Um, it's just, you know, if maybe if you already have an email field in there, maybe. It, having a second email field wouldn't make sense. I don't know. Right. But, um, you know, it's really up to you. I just gave you the options. I don't, don't really have a best practice here. Um, but you probably want something that, um, 
is going to trigger a bot to actually fill it out. Okay. Um, so that's the best data, I, best advice I can give. Um, and do you want multiple honeypot stacks to cover all? You could, you could have multiple honeypot stacks. So, uh, that's an interesting idea. Um, having multiple in there so that if they fill out one out of two or three, then, you know, right. It's not gonna, it's not gonna submit. It's an interesting idea. I never thought about that. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see any other, any other questions? Sorry about the stream, the stream hang. Um, I, 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 I looks like you guys missed part of it. Maybe, or some of you missed some of the data list. Um, the, I, as you saw at the end, you just, you, with the data list stack, um, you can configure, you know, multiple options and whatnot for that, for that. So sorry about that. Would you ever consider CSRF protection as a feature upgrade? Um, if you want to send me data, I'm not sure what what um, what you're looking for um, for that, but um, sure. And yes, Danny, I hate CAPTCHA too. So Honeypot, Honeypot is good. Give it a shot. Um, and uh, Andrew uh, asks, what happened to the deals of the week? Uh, Deal of the week is up right now on the website. Um, so yeah, go to, uh, you know, I, I realized on Monday that I think I forgot to send an email out last week. My bad. Um, but, uh, uh, it, there was a deal of the week last week. I forgot to send out the email. Um, but this week's email is already scheduled to go out Friday morning. Um, it, and, uh, you can get it now. It's compass, I think is the deal of the week this week. Um, and you can always check out the homepage. Weaver space homepage should always have, um, the latest deal of the week. Um, and actually I just had my son's helping me out and we're scheduling out the deals of the week for the rest of the year. So, um, for a couple of weeks, I had kind of forgotten because I pre-scheduled them out six months ago. Um, but now we're, we're, go we're good to go and the rest of the year is going to be all scheduled out. So we don't need to worry about that. Yes. CSRF can be done with a CSP. So that's what I thought. Um, I didn't know your exact, um, you know, requirements there, Dan, but, uh, yes, CSPs could, uh, um, you know, doing a CSP inside your HT access file or your server configurations might be the better way to go. Just really depends. If you want to create a post on Weaver space, we can chat about that. How's CMS2 going? Um, it's going, I worked on that a little bit yesterday and hopefully right after this live stream today, actually, I'm going to be working on it the rest of today. Um, so, um, the support load has been really heavy and, um, I really, I am kind of addicted to helping you guys. I love helping you guys. I love making you uh, do awesome things with my stacks. So, um, I, I do have to say that I, I probably should be working more on total CMS too, but I like helping you guys out. So, um, hopefully you guys are appreciating that. Um, cool. Just saw ET. Oh, yes. I have ET in the background. Yep. <laughs> Can you upload fields to Google spreadsheets? No, I do not have Google Sheets support um, right now. Um, so this is actually a good segue. Um, you know, Foundation 1 had MySQL support. And um, Foundation 6 doesn't have MySQL support. Um, so what what's going to happen with that? Um, I... My, the MySQL support actually will be moving over to post office and post office, a new major version of it will, will come out. It'll be a paid upgrade. And, um, the new version of post office will be completely different. Essentially what it will be is we, it will be a set of form actions. So you'll be able to build out a foundation six form and then, um, integrate it with MailChimp, integrate it with, um, you know, all the services that post office offers and then some more, I'm going to add MySQL support. Um, I'm actually going to add support for Zapier, which, it, which will be really cool as well. So you can have your, you know, your form submit to Zapier, which then can do an infinite amount of things. If you want that to integrate with Google sheets, you can do that. Um, I don't plan on Go native integration with Google sheets, but you could definitely do that through like Zapier. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, post office, uh, I, I did start working on that a little bit, but, um, it will probably not happen until after total CMS two ships. So um, I definitely need to get Total CMS 2 out before I do work on any other major product um, because I think that uh, that we need that. I think that is going to be a huge win for everybody. So I see a lot of Total CMS 2 uh, questions. Um, I'm not going to go through and answer every single each one of those. Are there tooltips part of CMS 2? I'm not sure what tooltips you're speaking of, Gaston, but um, there's a lot of really cool stuff in Total CMS 2.
Sweet. So uh, I think that, that does it for everybody today. I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this week. Uh, sorry, we went an extra like 20 minutes or so. But um, yeah, I still feel like there was so much I didn't get into with forms. Forms are really powerful. But hopefully this this gave beginners a, a glimpse on how to create forms. And it gave you power users a chance at some tips and tricks on how to do some really cool, interesting stuff that might be kind of hidden, like those little curly brace stuff using the HTML email stacks, passing parameters via the URLs and doing some cool stuff like that. Some real powerful stuff in forms. So I hope you enjoy that. Get a lot out of it. And uh, cool, we'll see you. Hopefully a lot of you will see you on Friday at the Hangout. And uh, if we don't, we'll see you over on the Weaver Space community. Take care, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.